I was seeking power. I was seeking something real because I wanted to see something that was tangible. I wanted to see something that was, was able to work in my life now. It was supernatural power Sean Patrick Williams wanted. He grew up attending church, but never saw a God of power working in his own life. At 14, Sean began using LSD. By 17, when his parents divorced, he was a drug addict living on the streets. At times, he blamed God for his world falling apart, and then he took a dangerous turn to the dark side. At that time, I just basically just cursed God, had these, these desires. I said, basically made a pact with Satan that if he'd you know, do these certain things for me, he could have my soul. Soon after his vow, Sean Patrick's life began to change. He became a drug dealer. Then he began to meet people that claimed to have the power he wanted. They worshiped Satan. I started dating a girl that was in the Wiccan religion. Through that process, I uh, had people that were you know, casting spells and, and reading my tarot cards. His reputation as a drug dealer grew, and so did his obsession for power. I had already had a affiliate, drug affiliate with the Dixie Mafia, the Mexican Mafia, all different Hells Angels. I, you know, I was selling drugs, interaction with all these people. And so over time, uh, I became personal friends with people that were, you know, in um, a preacher in the Church of Satan. His lucrative drug deals helped him buy his own business, a bar. Soon, a successful nightclub owner approached Sean and asked him to become a business partner. The man guaranteed Sean millions in profits, but there was a catch. His business partner practiced Santeria, a form of Satanism involving animal sacrifice. As part of the deal, Sean Patrick was obliged to join. One evening at the man's nightclub, Sean was prepared to make that step. I knew what they were, they were getting me to the point to a ritual to, you know, the blood sacrifice and, and um, setting me up for this point. So. Here I am over, over this time period, um, I'm like intrigued about, I'm ready. I'm pretty much at the point where I, I, it's either I'm all the way in or I'm all the way out. And so they took me up into a DJ booth and there's about four or 500 people dancing there. And he says, now here I am, I'm, I'm high on ecstasy, I'm high on cocaine, I'm drinking. He turned around and, and as he turned around, he looked and he held his arms out, looked in my eyes and said, what do you think? It was then the man offered Sean riches in the business world if he would seal his deal with Satan with a blood sacrifice. But at that moment, Sean's mind cleared. The haze of drugs fell away, and he heard something he'd never heard before. And when he turns around like that, uh, a, a voice spoke to my spirit. It was like my consciousness. And it was just as plain as day. It said, heaven's real and hell's real, and you've got to make a choice. And for the first time, <laughs> And years, here I am standing under the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm convicted of sin. I'm clear in my mind. I'm not high. And I'm sitting here looking at him, and I'm thinking, how in the world did I get here? I said, oh, God, will you help me? At that moment, I said, God, I'm a drug addict, and I'm worthless here. But if you'll take my life, I'll give it to you, and I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to. As soon as the door opened up, God got me out of there, and I never came back. I never tried to call him again. And until nine months later, I found out the bar had shut down. Sean also kicked his drug habit and amazingly never experienced withdrawal symptoms. The power of the Holy Spirit to bring me through deliverance for no DTs, no relapses, to make those desires go away, there's power in that. I tried to do it three or four times on my own. I couldn't. While Sean Patrick's initial turn from evil was immediate, a spiritual battle in his home lasted for nine more months. I had things happen like my bed levitating off the ground and I'm scared, I'm scared, you know, hiding under the sheets, and I, you know, I've never experienced anything like this, but I finally got so sick of being scared that I just got up out of my bed, and I said, you know what, you fine, go ahead and kill me. I'm gonna live for Jesus, and I'm gonna be in heaven, and you gotta go, and you gotta leave in the name of Jesus. The demonic activity in his home vanished that night. Sean Patrick began to read the Bible constantly. I wasn't grounded in a good church at that moment yet, and I was just had my Bible. I was resting, I would find a scripture and I would rest in it and I would just stand on the scripture. Sean was still running a bar, so he read his Bible at work. I'd lay it out on the bar and in between serving customers, man, I would just have it out there. And so I would read the scripture and, and just wait on the customers. And it was the only thing that would keep those desires from over, overtaking my mind. Finally, he sold the bar. And after two and a half years of praying and searching, Sean met and married Christy. 
I thank God for my wife and my children and to be able to live and serve Him and to be able to know Him and His presence and in the person of Christ. Christy says her husband's reliance on the Bible is the key to his happy and successful life. He always um, brings, brings situations back to the Word of God. And we are, we are founded on the Word. Our family's founded on the Word. It's, it's, it's the, the true north in our life. Now, he says he's found the ultimate power in Jesus Christ. When I met him and when I gave my life to him and had my, my encounter with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus, um, that was power. The things that he showed me was that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or think because that's his nature, you know, he's, he's power.